Hello YouTube, Jay here, and welcome back to the Glove Room. This will be my second installment in the Rawlings Custom Heart of the Hide Glove Series, this time featuring the Rawlings Pro 504 6. I'd like to go over all the particulars from leather to lace, but also talk about the inspiration behind the glove and some of the particulars about the Pro 504 pattern that you may not know uh, because you just don't see this one all too often. First, a little bit behind the inspiration of the glove. This glove is called the Annapolis Colorway, and I designed it uh, with my wife. Now, I encourage all of you guys out there, it doesn't matter how old you are, to find yourself a woman or girls, find yourself a guy that you just want to sit down and take an hour out of your day and design gloves. I did not think that my wife would want to go over some of the particulars of a glove, be it from pattern to web design to trim, uh, and she really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed doing that with her. Uh, it was a great experience, and uh, her name is on this one. You know, I'm actually not going to be gaming this one. This one's going to go downtown to her office where she can always look at it and be like, yep, my husband buys too many baseball gloves. But this was a lot of fun to build uh, with the help of my good friend Craig Brooks from John Cole Sporting Goods who put this order in. So thank you, as always, Craig, um, for taking care of that. So looking at the U.S. Naval Academy's helmets that they were using for the 2015 season, and also the ones that they had hand-painted and designed by Under Armour for the Army-Navy game in 2015, that was where this inspiration came from. Um, and the red just kind of looked good because it matched the patches. But Stacey, thank you so much for uh, designing this one with me and uh, you know allowing me to get another glove. And also thanks, Craig, for, for, for putting it through. Um, so let's talk about the Pro 504 pattern itself. Uh, you don't see this one all that often these days. I think the last guy to use one, I'm not really sure. It may have been R.A. Dickey in 2013 when he won his gold glove with Toronto. He had a Pro 504 12. And if you've watched any of my videos on uh, web styles, that 12 is a dual hinge basket web uh, that Dickey had in black. Uh, it's a 12 and a half inch glove. So it's very strange to see him use that as a pitcher. Uh, I guess because you're not throwing the ball a million miles an hour. Uh, that you need to, you know, you can get yourself into a good defensive position, but you don't see a 12 and a half inch pattern on pitchers too often. You see most of them at 12, 12 and a quarter inch. Uh, and also for outfielders, it really is kind of a tweener pattern. Uh, outfielders want between a 12 and three quarter inch and a 13 inch glove. So, you know, the more reach you can get, the better. So I don't know why you'd want to shorten uh, the length of that glove. Also, the glove itself does not want to be held two in the pinky or six finger grip. Uh, it's very traditional in its hold. I'll show you that when I turn the camera around. Uh, it really wants to be held from the flex from thumb to in between the middle and ring finger. So uh, this glove is seen a lot in, uh, say, softball forums or in elite level softball tournaments and conference play. I see a lot of uh, 504s out there for guys that are playing third base. Uh, even if you have a really nice uh, A2K DW5, 12 inches may not be long enough uh, for you to play the hot corner in softball. The longer glove you have in softball, because you don't have as much reaction time, the better off you'll be in the infield. So that's a little bit about the pattern itself. If you have any additional questions, I know this has been quick, email me at thejetsohome at gmail.com or find me on Instagram at picklebeast 417 I'd like to turn the camera around now and go over all the particulars from leather to lace. And uh, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> hey, so let's get started, shall we? Again, this is a Pro 504 6. And if you guys know me, you know that six is my favorite number, and that's also my favorite web style, the H-Web. Let's first take a look in the palm. The palm I had gotten done in Royal, which turns out very well. Uh, the stamping is gold. You can see on the pinky and in the palm. And the lace color I had done was white. There's also white stitching on the web and uh, white stitching throughout. And the trim color on it is also Royal on the thumb and the wrist and the pinky and I did the shell back in white. You can see the stitching in white on the royal web and also the embroidery in red on the back which kind of sets off the patch a little bit and uh, all that twinkle that you see is metallic gold. Now I wanted to save this part for last because I think it's important. Uh, the metallic gold looks great. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, it looks fantastic. The accent color with gold throughout um, really sets this glove apart from any other that I have. Unfortunately, uh, in the words of Robert Frost, nothing gold can stay. Uh, this color has a tendency to fade, um, even if through the shipping process, and I no, don't know if you can see it, but there's a small scuff mark 
here at the bottom of the welting or the binding, sorry. And uh, that's gray underneath. So with any abrasion or any significant uh, wear and tear, I feel like the gold is going to wear away uh, quicker than you would think. So just be aware of that when you're doing your custom options. I know it's going to look good, uh, but is it going to play well? Uh, I'm not entirely certain. I think it's going to fade pretty quickly. And I think that it does in the palm as well. The palm stamping that's gold, uh, it's not embossed as deeply. So that would, uh, I would suspect, would fade pretty quickly. And that's okay. Uh, just something for you guys as consumers to be aware of. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys was the fit. So this is me putting this glove on traditionally. And the flex goes from thumb to in between the middle and the ring. Very traditional in how you hold it. Um, it really is very comfortable to hold in this pattern or in this way. It's just a little bit big for me at uh, 12 and a half. Uh, but I can understand why softball infielders really like this pattern and uh, really like this style. But if I held it two in the pinky, six finger style, this really pushes against my thumb here. It doesn't feel like uh, this is a very natural grip. Uh, it doesn't really want to make a hard U shape at the bottom. Uh, that would lend itself to a thumb to pinky flex. So I think this one was more for a traditional hold and uh, we'll just leave it at that. So I really like this glove. I really like the pattern. I think it's unique. Uh, my curiosity got the best of me and that's the reason why I purchased it. Uh, this glove will most likely be on the shelf, hopefully downtown at my wife's office where she can always look at it and know that her husband is an idiot. So uh, let me turn the camera around and uh, <laughs> say goodbye to you guys properly. Hey, so that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching my Pro 5046 overview. Um, up next in the third installment of the Rawlings Custom Heart of the High Glove Series is the Pro 3036 that I've gotten done in Sandlot and Black. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, hit me up at the home at gmail.com. And don't forget to give me a follow on Instagram at PickleTheBeast417. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay grassy.